my name is Jackson Reimers, and I am with the team at Arango DB. Um, thank you for checking out our session today on Graph and Beyond, the Lunch Break Edition. Um, I'm going to walk you through a fraud detection demo uh, within Arango DB Oasis. Um, all right, so to get started here, like I mentioned, this is Graph and Beyond, Lunch Break Edition, uh, intended to be quickly, you know, viewed while you eat your lunch. Um, if you don't know anything about us here at Arango DB. We are a native multi-model database uh, that supports graph, document, and key value storage. Um, native in the sense that we were built from the ground up off of C++ to handle these different data models. Um, you know, there is a lot of kind of other options out there on the market that claim to be multi-model but are actually retrofitted. Um, we were you know, native in the sense that we were built for this. Um, some other options that are included with Arango DB are some of our full text search, Arango search, and we have a machine learning option um, as well called Arango ML. Um, today, we're going to speak a little bit more about our managed service Oasis, and we're going to run a couple queries to show how fraud detection could be used uh, with Arango DB. Um, AQL is going to be the language that we're typing in. That is um, our language. Uh, a lot of developers really love our language and find that it is extremely scalable and flexible uh, for the needs they need to be done. Um, Arango DB Oasis, like I mentioned, is the easiest way to get started with Arango DB. Um, Oasis can be hosted on AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure. Um, it is allows you to scale up, scale out. Um, everything within Oasis has these enterprise features as well. Um, we are an open source company and do have a community edition, but um, when you, you know, try Oasis, you'll be able to try all of our different features, uh, including those in the Enterprise Edition. So speaking a little bit more about the demo we're gonna go through today, um, you'll see that you know, we have a bank and each bank has branches and each branches have customers and each, cus each customer has an account. Now with between these accounts and these customers, there's all sorts of edge collections showing the relationship between these nodes. Um, so I think it's easiest if we just dive in and I show you kind of what's going on here. First thing you wanna do is go to cloud orangodb.com um, and if you'd like to follow along I'll show you how to do that as well um, you'll want to hit start free if you don't have an account or log in uh, if you do um, for me it's going to automatically log myself in here and if I go to the top left here in the dashboard we will see my first deployment diving into my first deployment here if you don't have one spun up you'll want to get that going um, and while you wait, you might as well hop over to examples here and install the fraud detection example that we're about to go through. Um, here's the guide that we'll walk you through step by step as well. Um, and that's what I'll be following along on separate screen as we go through this. So back to my deployment here, we're going to want to copy the root password and open up our endpoint. Once we have that going, we're going to type in root and paste the password I just copied. Now I'm going to select the fraud option and open that up. Just to give you a visual example of what's going on in here, I'm going to hit graphs along the left side and fraud detection. Um, now, once you see, you know, there's a lot of data here, it's not going to load the whole thing. We can ask it to load up here the, the entire view, um, but we don't need to. This is more just for the sake of, of learning and understanding. So. Looking at this, you can see that there you know, are transactions with these nodes. If you select a node, you can delete it, edit, expand, you know, do whatever you need to do within the RangoDB Oasis. Um, moving on here, I'm gonna just dive right into finding some suspicious accounts um, within this. Um, so we go along the left here and hit queries, and we would punch in this first query, which is on step two of the guide that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna paste that in here and hit execute on the bottom right. All right, so now you're going to see here what we're looking at is a long loop. Long loops are a way to identify fraud because they are, it really means that there's a transaction starting from one account and after a really long circle, the money ends back up in that account. Uh, this type of looping behavior is really important because it's a way for, you know, people and fraudsters to uh, circumvent local laws and, you know, within large data sets with millions of data points, the, the the loop can be extremely long. So um, identifying these kinds of transactions and these things are, are very important if we ever wanted to catch some of these bad guys, right? So just to follow one of these, it starts here at 4, 4, 43, 44, 50, 
bounces out all the way down here, wraps back around, comes into 32 from here, right there, 36, 41, and then back to 43. So just a huge long loop there um, to probably circumvent some laws and you know maybe hide some type of money. Um, next, we're gonna look up some curious loops. Um, and we'll do that by going to the query box once again, uh, pasting in the query, hitting new, pasting in the query that is on step three of the guide and punching in the execute. All right, so what's gonna show up here is essentially the same thing, but in a simpler view. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just one big circle. So as you can tell, there's this really long loop that we just walked through, 42, 43, 44. So these are, this is the exact loop that we just walked through, but with a better view on it and this curious loop that gets back in the same doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, there can't be, you know, these, these accounts, it doesn't, you know, this is not why you use a bank is to move money around um, to the same accounts. So that seems pretty curious, um, but to find all of the suspicious long loops within our data set, we're gonna want to run the query that is in step four of the guide. Um, we punch in new here and run this query. All right. Right, so same deal here. All sorts of transactions, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Probably some nefarious uh, you know, behavior going on here. Um, maybe something you want to look into. Um, so, you know, with this graph, you can visualize the result and, and kind of see, you know, helps you to better structure your view on the data and see the actual loops of financial transactions, um, you know, that are happening right here in front of your face. Um, lastly, we're going to check out some <clears throat> orphan accounts and what orphan accounts are, are accounts that, you know, maybe set up with, you know, in advance of money laundering operations. So, they have little or no transactions uh, associated with them. And we're going to punch it new again, paste in the query from the fifth step in the guide and execute. Now, this isn't going to be a graph, right? So here's your table. Um, and that's because you know it lists all the orphan accounts. There's no transactions to show because, like I mentioned, they may be setting these accounts up to then money launder through them. Um, so you can also display this as a JSON, but just thought it'd be useful to visualize here in the table. Um, lastly, so before you know, we end the demo, this is the last query we're gonna run through today, but I wanted to kind of pull up the collections here um, just to give you a visual on, on what this looks like. So here we're gonna have just a standard basic account store, right? So we click on one of these and there you go. There's the balance, the type, and here's your attributes that you kind of define these documents with. Um, everything up top here is automatically generated um, but just to give you a view of what it looks like as an edge, um, you can see that in something like a transaction, right? So um, our edges can be stored as documents themselves with all sorts of attributes even nested into them. So you'll see here, um, you know, these, these different attributes on this, from this transaction, from this edge. Um, and these things are automatically generated, like I mentioned from in the two. So, these are special attributes um, and they help kind of define what's happening within the database and between each transactional account and, and nodes and edges and all that good stuff. Um, so that is going to be the end of the demo today. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, learned a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can reach me at jackson at orangodb.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn. Um, you can reach out to our team at any time. Uh, we have a very active community slack as well so feel free to reach out there um you know talk to others see how they're using RangoDB. if you have specific questions for your use case we're always here to help um and like i mentioned if you just want to do this poke around see what oasis is like download it it's free uh, you have 14 days to, to learn and, and do whatever you'd like so look forward to speaking with you all and uh hope you had a great lunch